Yeah, I haven't shot a devlog in a while, so I just decided to start one. Uh, you might have noticed this channel has developed a weird obsession with tape, tape and tape players and tape recorders. I use this tape recorder uh, for notes and a couple other things. I've used it in several videos on my uh, Japan diary videos. And it's actually uh, my second one. I have a, another one. The original one that was used in all the videos is actually this one. But I found a second one for very, very cheap on eBay that came with the box and an AC power cable and everything. So anyway, I got this one home. Uh, it was jammed and all I had to do was slap it against my palm once. But unfortunately, immediately uh, rewind and, and fast forward stop working. Now this mechanism is based on the Walkman WM22, I believe. So the uh, inner workings and some of the parts are pretty much identical. These have a common failure point. Uh, if you remove, let's see here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth screw is actually the screw that holds the strap in on the inside. Pop them six screws out. So uh, be careful with your speaker, especially if you don't have a soldering tool because these might get ripped off really easy. And this white cog here is what controls fast forward and reverse. You see it has a belt on here, but this belt is actually too loose. It actually came from the other one. I swapped belts on them when I got them. It was actually cheaper than buying a new belt kit. But um, this thing actually locks in and locks out. It kind of lifts up and pushes over to the right and left. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Um, yeah, see how it does that? And then that falls off. There's supposed to be a little ring that holds this plastic piece on, but because it's plastic and this is from 1987, it eventually cracks. So if you have one of these 80s WM22 style Walkman, which you can figure out if you go to, I believe it's Walkman Museum, um, but there are several websites to talk about, I'm get my hand off there. There are several websites to talk about Walkmans and uh, the different mechanisms that they have. This is. This isn't technically a Walkman recorder. I think that they, those are reserved for stereo recorders. Yeah, the box just calls it the TCM-17 cassette recorder. It's not actually technically a walking recorder. I'm not gonna move my camera. I'm just gonna awkwardly do this. But anyway, be careful if you're working on one of these to not tear your speaker apart. Basically what I'm gonna do with this one, which is exactly what I did with this one here uh, in Japan, it broke on me literally using it like out in on a train or some crap. Martha Stewart style, I can show you that this one is completely assembled and works perfectly. Let me go ahead and put a tape in there. Let's see here. See that works. Maybe kind of rough with it. Although um, it's important that if you have one that you get one and uh, the fast forward and rewind don't work. Don't like sit there and mash the button back and forth. Cause as you saw when I did that one time, this piece flew off. What happens is if I sit the speaker back about where it was, this is supposed to fit underneath the outer metal case of the speaker, right? So it moves back and forth underneath the rim here. And this rim is made of metal. So eventually it will just sort of lift up like that and it'll kind of beat against that until it either falls completely off or what happened to mine was it got stuck on there and as it spins it will actually uh, grab that spring and tear it and pull it and I had to actually cut the spring on my other one and kind of stretch it out a little bit and uh, it does work it doesn't work perfectly now but it works good enough but yeah that that's basically what you got to do. Um, tweezers disappeared, but what you're going to need to do is you're going to get some kind of super glue that's for plastic bonding. Uh, at the time, I had got some random super glue from a Japanese, I think it was a 7-Eleven, and that worked fine for me. As long as it melts plastic a little bit. Find the spot where it's cracked. You can tell I already tried to re-glue this one with a shittier kind of glue in it. My fingernails are super long for some reason. You need to get a pair of tweezers, push this thing down, about right there so you can see the end of that you can actually feel it when you push it down it'll kind of click in place but when you let go of it it'll push it back off so push it down in place so it's under tension hold it with your tweezers and then glue a shitload of glue around that spindle as you can see there's like a little piece 
around the edge there, that black stuff. What you want is to actually fuse the white plastic to that black piece there, and then maybe put a little drop of it on top of the metal spindle too. Um, if you use a, a plastic grade super glue, that will melt those two pieces of plastic together. I mean, it'll be almost impossible to pry it apart if you ever need to change the cog out, which I doubt you'll have to do because this is a pretty much all plastic mechanism. Fortunately on this machine, the only thing that cracks in half in a similar fashion is that little top hat right there, which you can re-glue or drop into your battery compartment. Anyway, if I've edited this video to be at least somewhat coherent, again, push your speaker to the side, take your batteries out, super glue this on there, push it down, hold it with a pair of tweezers for however long it takes until it sets. And then maybe if you got some, replace this foam because it's, it's gooey on mine. All that does is protect your wires, but. Anyway, if you have forward and reverse problems on a Sony TCM17 or a WM22, it's probably the same exact thing. But if you need to change the belt, it's the same, you just pop that off. As you can see, that one's a little bit, I don't know. Or maybe you can't see it because auto autofocus is pissing me off. It's a little bit too stretchy, it's a little bit weak. You can kind of feel it with your finger that's almost like sticky. That, that means your belt is going bad. Just a little bit later, I did end up gluing this one. What you want is to be able to hit these buttons and then have that not hit that speaker, which is not happening. That will hit. And we'll be able to switch back and forth without it hitting that speaker. So, so it works. Just make sure, for the love of God, if you re-glue this, it is not touching that speaker. I want to make one final addendum to this little project here. Uh, it also had a bad belt. And uh, you might be able to go to Mars, M-A-R-R-S, and find a kit for the WM-22 because it has the same mechanism. Uh, but I went to a different website called Studio Sound Electronics because I needed to order several different kinds of belts for machines that no one's ever heard of. And this machine, for this one I bought, this belt right here, 4.6 inches, uh, 0.046 width. It's just like a hair too thick, but it does seem to work just fine. Sounds like a normal person. Though. We won't get copyright claimed, but uh, it's it seems you know to work just fine. Um, make sure when you install it though that you do kind of turn it to the side. If you I don't know if you can see this, but you see how that belt is slotted through there. Uh, the sharp side is on the inside there, just like that. That's how you need to slot that thing through. Otherwise, it'll just slip right off. Especially since it's just a hair thicker. You might be able to tell it's just a hair thicker. But uh, the 0.046 width, 4.6 inches long belt seems to work uh, just just about right. And if you have the uh, TCM17 uh, and you have a belt that doesn't quite fit right, um, it might change your playback speed. As long as your playback smoothness is good, you're good because it has speed control. Thing before I go. Um, when you apply your glue, uh, make sure to not get it all over your fingers and shit. I had to re-glue one of these feet back on. As you can see, it got glue all over the edge. Um, that stuff will melt and bond to plastic. So if you're trying to keep yours nice and clean and perfect, and it gets little spots like that on there, there's pretty much nothing you can do except try to get like really, really fine sandpaper and polish it out, and that's probably not going to happen. And it's, you know, it's a cheap tape record from the 80s. So try to take care of it in the first place, and don't be a dummy like me. Anyway, thanks for watching. What's your favorite singer? Michael Jackson! Michael Jackson! You love Michael Jackson, don't you? Batman is my favorite player. I don't know what that meant. <laughs>